Okay, welcome. This is the lecture for the Design 2 Color Theory class for Unit 3. And um, as we talked in class, we looked at some images. I said that a lot of this unit, Unit 3, and a whole lot of the next unit, Unit 4, is going to be based on some of the ideas of Joseph Albers. And But I also mentioned in class that Joseph Albers and Ani Albers are two artists that um, I have huge admiration for beyond just the relevance to these specific assignments. So like today we're going to be talking a lot about homage to square, but Joseph Albers produced lots of different bodies of work and Ani Albers also, and they are both, they were like the encourage everyone to go to the, uh, the Albers Foundation website and to look at um, all the resources they have available, especially the collection of artwork. If you click on the after you click on artists, you click on the art section right there, and you get to this page. And from here, you can see all of the different bodies of work that these two amazing artists produced. And so I would definitely um, encourage you to do that. And unfortunately, though, we don't have time in this lecture to cover all of those works of art, but we do have a little bit of time to talk a little bit more about homage to square. And so the ones that I picked for you to look at um, are the, specifically the many of his most quiet versions of these, where the contrasts of color are really low and the contrast, especially the reduction of value contrast, is really low. So he's looking at compositions with very small amount of value contrast and um, a lot more other type contrasts, you know, more intensity and temperature contrast, but everything is kind of reduced and quiet. And one of the things that you find with these really kind of low contrast compositions is that it really gets you to think about these edges. You'll notice the sense of like these colors shifting, right, going from one color to another. They're not actually shifting, it's just our perception of this color from here to there changes as we get closer to this next section of color. It's pretty amazing. And so in the sketchbook for this unit, I'm asking you to come up with compositions sort of based off of the homage to square idea in which you take some shape and you think about radiating outward, uh, repeating that shape. And uh, like I said in class, I want you to think about at least the two major extremes of like how more complicated can I get um, while still keeping that overall quiet feel, and also how reduced, how how economical can these be? Obviously, Albers' design idea here is pretty darn reduced. It's very hard to find anything more reductive, more simple, more economical than this, where he's repeating just you know squares, and you know the only real variation is the change in the location, so that the so they don't radiate out equally in every direction. But here are some student examples of sketchbook work, um, like what you're doing right now, thinking about these ideas. Uh, this one actually is a little bit of a red herring. This is act from the next unit, but because the colors were so similar, I thought I'd put that in there. And I'll get you to think about what it is maybe that that, that composition is doing. And then here are some examples of the digital exercises based on that. And remember, in the digital exercise, I asked you to find colors from a photograph where you kind of zoom in on just sky colors and trying to really focus on the less obvious. Here's a chart that one person had of all their different sky colors that they found and trying to find as much change of temperature and as much change of intensity, but with as little change of value as possible. Some did that more than others, but these are all pretty re restrained in terms of low contrast of value and a lot of kind of subtle changes of intensity and subtle changes of temperature. And so these are all, um, actually, that's digital. And then this one is painted. And so uh, the painted versions, now remember, for you guys, I'm having you do your painted version uh, where you only do one instead of having to repeat the the side-by-side -side aspect in the, like in the digital one. So uh, that'll be a little bit different. But here are two examples 
of, of painted ones based off of the digital exercise. And one of the nice things about going from the digital exercise to the painted one and having it be so much a kind of a repeat is it really gives you a chance to think through your I color ideas and think about how they're going to change when you make this into a physical painted object rather than a digital object. And because even when it's printed, it's not as, as real and tangible and physical as, as something that's painted. Um, but notice how these really, really low contrasts of temperature, how well they work, how quiet they are. Here's another one. Obviously, one of the biggest difficulties with these as painted objects is keeping the craft, the precision of edges. That one's really nice. This is Javante. He really, really started to take off on this on this particular unit with these particular assignments. And I love these really subtle changes right here. Look how these two colors are almost the exact same value to each other. Um, but the change of intensity and the change of temperature, they really kind of sing to each other. It's a glowing kind of feeling. Also a really nice set. This is probably, of all the solutions, probably the loudest one. A little bit off topic in a way because of the, the contrast, but still, I liked it. Okay, and like um, we also talked about, this whole unit ends with us working on the project where we do um, a collage and then an exact reproduction of the collage in paint. And uh, you'll notice, actually, I didn't get to photograph this until one of the keys had actually fallen off. So, um, so originally had two keys right there, um, and so we're following the so, you know the something old, something borrowed, something blue uh, kind of rules where we're looking at some flat colors, but also some uh, imported designs from somewhere else, like someone's logo design, and we're also bringing in some physical things, although kind of low relief, not not too big. It's a really nice one as well. And the primary purpose of this assignment is to really get you to see how we can use what we've learned to really match color. And in a way, matching color is kind of an also important part of this assignment because we create these colors digitally and then we have to try to match them in paint. So learning to see how what we just learned about um, intensity of color and like charting out our Munsell chart and then being able to apply that knowledge so that we can make compositions like this and make them as close to our digital projections and then to do this to be able to make things this close an approximation of each other it really does um, it helps to know the structure of color and to know like how a Munsell chart works okay that's about it all right I will uh, see you all tomorrow morning thanks